In the chronicles of interstellar warfare, few names echo with as much authority and reverence as that of General Holden. A colossal figure known for his bold leadership, his influence on the galactic conflict was truly profound. But amidst the glory of Holden's illustrious career lies a hidden narrative, a tale of ingenuity, tactics, and steadfast dedication. This is the chronicle of how General Holden forged his mech division into one of the most formidable forces in the galaxy. In hindsight, Terran victory in the Galactic War seems inevitable. The Terran forces were well-equipped, well-informed, and had mobilized all the manpower needed to liberate the galaxy from the Dominion's terror. However, it's easy to overlook the gravity of the situation during the war itself. Months of meticulous planning and split-second decisions at crucial junctures reshaped the destiny of the cosmos. The Alpha Centauri frontier served as the initial tipping point in a series of events leading up to the pivotal Battle of Orion's Belt. Forged from the remnants of the great interstellar conflict, mechs emerged as the epitome of modern warfare, machines that could shift the balance of power with their technological prowess. And in Holden's hands, the mech became a force to be reckoned with. Holden was a visionary leader who grasped the potential of mechanized warfare like few others. He saw mechs not merely as weapons of destruction, but as tools of dominance and control. The golden age of mechanized warfare epitomized a fierce technological arms race between rival factions. The idea of utilizing armored mechs in combat had been a fantasy since the dawn of space exploration, yet it wasn't until the crucibles of interstellar conflicts that engineers could fashion mechs fit for galactic warfare. In the heat of battle, Mech crews relied heavily on the command and control structures provided by their frontline commanders. In mechanized warfare, the significance of efficient logistics cannot be overstated. Subpar logistics can be as lethal as enemy fire. Most of our viewers aren't yet subscribers. If that's you, then please hit subscribe and help support the channel. Equally vital to the war effort were the civilians back home who manned the assembly lines and piloted civilian spacecraft, braving the treacherous cosmic currents of the galactic expanse. The galactic war truly epitomized an all-hands-on-deck endeavor where both military and civilian contributions were essential to securing triumph. The Alpha Centauri frontier served as a vital crucible for Terran forces and presented humanity with an opportunity to secure a strategic foothold. The decision to confront the Dominion's secondary units in the frontier was of paramount importance, as it signified the first major engagement of Terran forces in the conflict. Operation Nova, overseen by General Dwight E. Houston, marked the inaugural offensive aimed at challenging the Dominion forces on the frontier. The mission was to execute a coordinated assault across various planetary outposts, deploying over 65,000 Terran troops. Of these, 33,000 troops were directly transported from Earth. The insights gained from the arduous skirmishes on the frontier came at a steep cost, with numerous sacrifices made by Terran forces. Nevertheless, the priceless knowledge acquired from the initial setbacks in the frontier proved to be a strategic investment that reaped substantial rewards later in the galaxy. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, the Dominion forces possessed a formidable asset, General Zorkel and his mech divisions. The Battle of Orion's Rift stands as a stark reminder of General Zorkel's mastery of ambush tactics, where he cunningly lured Terran mechs into a barrage of plasma fire. The toll exacted during this campaign was staggering, with over 6,500 souls lost. The adoption of new strategies to counter the heavy assaults of Dominion forces came at a heavy cost borne by the lives of Terran soldiers and pilots. Recognizing the need for decisive action, the Terran Council made a critical change of command, entrusting the fate of the campaign to the capable leadership of General Holden. General Holden emerged as a commanding figure characterized by both aggression and strategic foresight. He prioritized logistics and defensive preparations while astutely exploiting General Zorkel's most human weakness, arrogance. While the Terran Alliance benefited from the manufacturing miracle at home, rapidly producing essential war supplies, General Zorkel and the Dominion forces faced challenges with strained resupply routes. Zorkel's illustrious moniker as the Stellar Predator often led him to overextend his forces and supply lines. The Dominion supply lines stretching from Alpha Centauri to the frontline outposts stretched dangerously thin under the weight of Zorkel's ambitions. Driven by the demands of his leaders and his own hubris, 
Zorkel pressed on despite logistical challenges, even personally overseeing refueling operations. However, his supply shortages left him vulnerable. Recognizing this weakness, General Holden outmaneuvered him, shifting the tide of the conflict in favor of the Terran forces. In the Terran Alliance, every sector of industry was mobilized for the production of armaments during the Galactic War. General Holden oversaw the deployment of thousands of mechs to the front lines with many more in production. The populace united around a shared purpose, rapidly expanding the Terran defense forces from a modest fleet to a formidable armada by the war's conclusion. As Holden began to shift the course of the war on the frontier, a new technology emerged, the Quantum Radar MK4. This compact yet powerful radar could detect cloaked Dominion vessels that had previously evaded detection. Coupled with the successful decryption of the Dominion encryption protocols, this technology neutralized surprise attacks across all Terran theaters of engagement. Zorkel's once formidable 7th Mech Division. Holden abandoned outdated frontal assault tactics of the old wars in favor of dynamic mech maneuvers, a strategy still applicable in modern warfare. In the cycle of 2433, Holden was temporarily promoted to the rank of Fleet Admiral. Leading the Terran 7th Fleet into the Orion Nebula, he employed his mechanized forces in a swift drive that resulted in the liberation of Alpha Centauri in July and Vega Prime in August. The zenith of Holden's career occurred during the dynamic sweep of his third fleet across the Andromeda Galaxy in the summer of 2434. This campaign was characterized by remarkable initiative and a willingness to disregard conventional military doctrines. Holden's mechanized units did not become operational until the commencement of the Orion Offensive nearly two cycles after the Terran Dominion. However, by the end of the offensive, they had swiftly liberated key outposts including Orion Prime, Altair, Proxima Centauri, and Sirius. As Dominion resistance in the Orion frontier started to crumble, a rift emerged between advancing Terran and Galactic Union forces, posing a threat to entrap multiple Dominion divisions. Holden was eager to complete the encirclement of the Dominion, but his superior, Admiral Emily Rogers, was concerned that such a maneuver would expose Holden's flanks to potential Dominion's counterattacks. By the time the rift between Orion's belt front was sealed, an estimated 20,000 to 40,000 Dominion troops had managed to escape. As the Third Fleet moved closer to the Dominion border, progress was hindered by logistical challenges though the advance persisted until it encountered formidable Dominion defenses at Arcturus and Andromeda in November. In December 2434, the Dominion launched a large-scale surprise counterattack in the Cygnus Expanse, encircling the Terran 101st Airborne Division at Nova Prime. Responding to the crisis, Supreme Terran Commander Admiral Emily Rogers issued orders for Holden's Third Fleet to relieve Nova Prime. Holden demonstrated remarkable agility in repositioning his forces with astonishing speed to meet this urgent task. The eager and inexperienced troops who ventured into the Orion frontier were now molded into hardened warriors as they surged to reinforce Nova Prime and beyond. Through the trials of the Orion frontier, Vega Prime, Altair, and beyond, Holden's mech squads evolved into a highly efficient and cohesive force, finely tuned and prepared for any adversary. Holden's intelligence officer, Lieutenant Colonel Samantha Reyes, played a crucial role in facilitating such a feat she accurately anticipated the Dominion offensive through meticulous analysis of enemy formations and movements. Consequently, advanced elements of the Third Fleet were able to reach Nova Prime's steadfast defenders on December 26, with additional reinforcements streaming in thereafter. New operational protocols were implemented, guiding troops from disarray to becoming a formidable mechanized force penetrating Dominion-held territory with surgical precision. Across all sectors, be it stellar, planetary, or orbital, Terran forces had honed their expertise in tracking, engaging, and obliterating the enemy. In the pivotal battle of the Galactic War, Holden's mechanized juggernaut unleashed every hard-won insight with unyielding might, dealing a decisive blow to the adversary. Holden's forces sustained unyielding pressure on the withdrawing Dominion, and by the end of January 2435, the Third Fleet had pushed to the Dominion frontier. On March 1st, these forces seized Cygnus Prime, resulting in one of the war's most renowned exchanges. When Holden received a message suggesting bypassing the city due to the need for additional reinforcements, he famously replied, Have taken Cygnus Prime with two fleets. Do you want me to give it back?
In the subsequent decacycles, Holden's troops cleared the entire sector north of the Eridanus Belt, ensnaring thousands of Dominion soldiers. They then allied with the 7th Fleet to sweep through the Gemini and Ursa regions, capturing a staggering 100,000 prisoners in the process. Holden's mech division was renowned for its speed, aggression, and audacity. He was never one to wait passively for the enemy's assault. Instead, he seized the initiative with unmatched ferocity. Yet, Holden's triumph wasn't solely attributed to mechs and strategies. It was about the individuals who fought alongside him. From the mech pilots to the logistics personnel, Holden instilled unwavering loyalty and commitment in all who stood beside him. Holden was perhaps the only Terran admiral to fully comprehend and execute mobile warfare in the galaxy. Most, if not all Terran commanders appeared to favor traditional tactics, cautious not to overextend. Holden was recognized for employing mission directives in command, wherein he would convey his objective and intentions to his fleet commanders, granting them the autonomy to devise the optimal approach to accomplish the given task. He wasn't renowned for micromanaging, preferring to entrust his subordinate commanders to carry out their designated duties competently. In summation, General Holden's leadership and foresight elevated his mech divisions into the most formidable mechanized force of the Galactic War, playing a pivotal role in the Terran triumph across the cosmos. His bold and innovative approach to mechanized warfare established the benchmark for forthcoming generations of military commanders.